Hello everyone, so today's tutorial is going to be a comparative one. We're going to compare the URANS method uh, and the large eddy simulation or the LES simulation. So uh, we're going to pick a subject. Uh, it's going to be about a, a two-dimensional uh, object to make things easier and quicker. And uh, it's going to be a pipe with a valve that is partially open. Uh, what we want to study or compare here is the uh, KV value or the flow coefficient value. Uh, basically, it's usually equal to the flow rate divided by the square root of the delta pressure, delta P, or the or the differential pressure across uh, the valve. So I'm going to first start uh, with the first model using K omega L the SST model. And we are going to uh, initiate the problem as a steady state one. So I'll start first with the mesh. Uh, as you can see, it's a two dimensional object. I have a valve in here in the middle. It's partially open. Uh, the geometry is divided into three sections, uh, two that are near the boundary wall. And there is the core section, which represent the middle section of the pipe. So for the mesh, I've created a face sizing for these two section in here, which is near the boundary wall, so that we can have a higher uh, resolution. And uh, I've set up a normal meshing procedure for the core. Now, the um, if you go to mesh, as you can see, uh, the sizing, uh, the relevant center will be fine. And I put the minimum size as 110 to the power minus uh, 5 meter and the uh, also, the maximum face size is 110 to the power minus 3 meter. For the face sizing, uh, and in order to create a face sizing, all you need to do is just uh, right click on mesh, insert, and sizing. And then uh, in the geometry, you can pick which objects you want to uh, manually size. So, And then you can choose the element size of the uh, sector or the section of the mesh itself so in this particular case i have a 6 10 to the power minus 4 meters for the near boundary wall sections and then i've created an inflation layers all also it's very easy to create one all you need to do is right click on mesh and then create an inflation layer once you get here you choose your geometry uh, and it will be this whole geometry and then you choose the edge uh, that you want to apply an inflation layer on. So as you can see, I have six edges because I've chosen them one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth edge is in here. I have uh, 10 layers uh, of, uh, uh, well, I have 10 layers uh, around, surrounding the uh, boundary wall in here. Uh, once you're done, you can right click on mesh and generate the mesh itself. So I've already generated this mesh. You can see how the resolution of it, it's I, I would consider it uh, perfect. You can see that we have a smaller size cells near the boundary wall and then we have an inflation layer also uh, at the wall itself in here and an inflation layer also at the valve wall. All right, once you're uh, done with the mesh, uh, you can set up your boundary selections. So I have uh, three. I have the inlet side in here. And I've created the outlet side. So to, to create the outlet side, click on the sections and then create named selection and call it outlet. And then I have the valve wall as well, which represent this section here. Once you're done, then you can go to uh, your mesh update and then you can go to set up to set it up in Fluent. Okay, so as I said, the first step is uh, we're going to create a, a URANS model or unsteady state uh, Reynolds uh, average Navier stock equation using the K omega SST model. Uh, I'm going to start by initiating my problem as a steady state and then I will uh, change it to an unsteady state. So to, to start it with a steady state, you click, pick on steady and then you go to model. You choose your viscous model, and in, in this particular case, I have the K omega 2 equation turbulence model with the SST uh, clicked in here. Press OK. And then in the material, you choose the material you want. So it's in this particular case, it's water liquid. You press and you copy. And then you go to the cell zone condition, and you make sure that in the zone, 
it is uh, set up to water liquid rather than uh, air which is by default so you press ok and then you go to the boundary condition so we've already set up inlet outlet and valve the inlet is a velocity inlet and uh, I put the velocity magnitude at 0 0.2 meter a second with the turbulence intensity of 5% and a viscosity ratio up to 10. As you all know, the viscosity ratio is usually the ratio between uh, the uh, eddy viscosity and the normal laminar uh, viscosity. All right, we press OK. And then in the outlet, you specify your gauge pressure. Uh, in this particular case, I put 15 southern pascal at the outlet. And then you press OK. Valve is set to wall. That doesn't have to change. Once everything is set up, now uh, it's time to go to the initialization. We use the hybrid initialization method. You click on initialize. And then you go to run calculation and you choose a number of iteration you would like to do. I do recommend to uh, run the first step of the simulation up until it gets to a uh, residual error of 110 to the power uh, 110 to the power minus 3 for the turbulence equation and the mo and the momentum and also the continuity equation. Once it hit that uh, residual error, then we can switch it to the transient simulation. All right, it's time now to calculate, and I'll see you after it uh, converges. All right, so after it converges, uh, we now go to general again and switch it from steady state to transient. We keep the model as it is. The boundary conditions don't have to change at all. So remember, the model we've chosen at the beginning is the viscous SSTK omega model. And then uh, now we can uh, create a calculation activity. So if in order to save your result files, you can create solution data export. You choose CFD post compatible. And you can choose the quantities that you want to analyze uh, in the post processing uh, phase. And also the frequency of uh, writing the file. So I would like, for example, to write one uh, result file every 20 time steps. And you press OK. Right. So the next step would be uh, then to just create all the reports that you would like to see. So the reports usually are found under report definitions. Before we define them, we need to understand what we're doing here. So basically what I want to study is uh, the, in, the pressure before the valve and the pressure uh, just downstream the valve to, to try and uh, get the delta P across this section of the pipe. By doing so, uh, I already have the flow rate going through the valve. And uh, I, I would get the delta P with respect to time, which could eventually uh, lead me to calculate the uh, K value or the flow coefficient. Remember, the flow coefficient is uh, usually equal to, this, um, to, to the flow rate divided by the square root of the delta P. To do that, we need to create two lines, one before and one after the valve. Uh, in order to collect information from, or at least to collect average pressure from. So to do that, you go to, uh, well, it's in setting up a domain. You go to create line. You set your coordinates. So in this particular uh, case, it's minus 0 0.07 to 0 0.07. And from minus 0 0.079 to 0 0.079 for the y uh, uh, direction and then you create the line uh, also you need to create a second line which is in here so in this uh, sorry so for the first line it's not minus 0 point it's minus 0 0.07 and minus 0 0.07 and the y would be from minus 0 0.079 to 0 0.079 once you created that line you create a second line uh, and this time it will be positive because remember so the first one would start from x negative and the second line would start with a positive x so from 0 0.07 0 0.07 and the y will stay the same and you create a second line this way you've already created two lines i'm going to show you in here uh, if we go to mesh and we select line two line six 
and here we go. So you, you already see that we have two symmetrical lines from uh, from the axis of the uh, from the middle axis of the valve, uh, which we're going to collect information from. To do that, we go now to reports. We click new, and it's going to be a surf. Uh, oh, sorry, we go to flow time. Click new on report definition, surface report, and it will be a face average. You choose the line, you keep it as face, it, face average and pressure. You click on report file, report plot, so that you can see the plot on Fluent, and you can print it in the console in here, and then press OK. You do the same thing as, as well again, uh, and this time for the second line, so surface report. Face average, you choose line 6, you create a report file, report plot, and print to console. Remember, the field variable is pressure, static pressure, and the report type is average. So we're getting or collecting the average pressure from both lines. You press OK, and you're ready now to uh, run the simulation. So for this simulation, uh, we already know what a little bit around the difference between the uh, unsteady RANS model and the LES simulation. So basically, a RANS model is a, uh, as as the name say, it's a Reynolds averaged uh, Navier stock equation. So it averages all the velocities, all the comp all the pressures. It's uh, and usually it, this averaging is based on the fluctuation of the uh, well the total velocity or the real velocity is based on the fluctuation of the velocity and the uh, av the normal or the averaged velocity so by averaging it we will be missing a lot of fluctuation a lot of eddies uh, in this model so uh, to be honest with you well, from experience i would go with a higher time step when i deal with uh, urens model than uh, uh, when then when dealing with uh, LES or large eddy simulation models. So for this particular case, I'm going to go for 0 0.0005 seconds. And uh, I'm, I'm going to just put a, a, as many time steps I need to get to one second of a simulation. For the maximum iteration per time step, uh, you can put it uh, at 45. You will never need to get to 45 anyway. Uh, but that should be enough. So remember, we're going to compare two models now. One using the transient K Omega SST model, and the other would be based on the large eddy simulation. To do that, uh, I'm going to just do one second of a simulation, and I can press calculate until we reach that one second. The next step would be uh, to go through the LES model and uh, to set up the problem.